to another exciting edition of Health Africa on AAU TV. If you're watching, you can follow us live on Association of African Universities on both Facebook and then on YouTube. Today I have with me very strong gentlemen here in the studio and we are coming to talk about community-based mental health rehabilitation services and counseling in Africa. And we are going to delve into both the community side and then the psychological side. So today the conversation will be two-sided. So please stay tuned. We are going on a quick break. We'll be back shortly. And when we back, when we come back, I'll introduce my guest. Please stay tuned. back. As I said before the break, we're talking about community-based mental health rehabilitation services and counseling in Africa. Okay, I have with me Mr. Emmanuel Jiwonu, and he is a psychologist at the La Paz Community Hospital. And I also have with me Mr. Reginald Ankara. He's also a community development officer at the Tema Metropolitan Assembly. You're welcome. Thank you. Is this your first time here in AAU? Yes, in your studio. But oh, okay, in my studio. <laughs> yes. So you've been here. Okay, great. How about you? Yeah, I think, I think this is my first okay. time. Okay. So since you're talking about community-based mental health rehabilitation services, I would like to know what the work of a psychiatrist is and then the work of a psychologist is. But well, okay. Um, I'll take that. Um, Primarily in mental health, we have um, a team of specialists that um, are on board. Okay. Uh, a lot of people would easily identify psychiatrists as uh, one of the players. But it's not just psychiatrists, psychologists are also there. Uh, basically, clinical psychologists. We also have counseling psychologists in there. And we have nurses who are specialized in mental health. Mm -hmm. So we call them psychiatry nurses. Um, but psychiatrists, vis-a-vis uh, -vis psychologists, if you're not quite careful, you confuse the two. Mm -hmm. A psychiatrist is a medical officer, okay. trained in basic medicine, and then goes ahead to specialize in mental health. Oh, okay. But a psychologist is not a medical officer. Okay. So he did not go to medical school. He is trained, or he or she is trained in psychology. Mm. That is human behavior. Mm. So the psychiatrist will be using medicine to treat the same thing the psychologist will be treating using other approaches. Usually we call it psychotherapy. Mm. So that's, that is it. Th those are the two key people we always or usually see at the forefront of mental health in, in various faci facilities. Okay. So that's, that's a difference. Psychologists doing the emotional uh, bit, okay. trying to treat mental health issues using psychological principles and interventions. Like. Um, well, if you want to go into that, <laughs> you know, finish okay. today. But um, psychotherapy is a, is, a, is a crux of it which comes in various ways. Um, for instance, we have what we call the cognitive behavioral therapy, where we look at people's thinking pattern, mm -hmm. how they appraise situations, mm -hmm. because if something is happening around you and you appraise it negatively, it affects you. Then we also look at a behavioral component where your acts or actions mm -hmm. end up giving you more problems. So cognitive behavioral therapy it's an approach where we try to delve into how the person is appraising the situation, okay. how the person is behaving along. Okay. So you help people to modify their thought patterns and their behavioral patterns. You know, that's, that is an example of um, a psychotherapy. But, and there are many others, of okay. course. But a psychiatrist will use medicine to treat the same thing. For instance, if someone is depressed, that is feeling loss of interest in life generally mm -hmm. and other activities. Mm -hmm. 
the psychiatrist will give you medicine that can boost your 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 mood, right? But we should understand that using medicine to boost your mood, which has to temporarily, when the medicine is out of your system, the cause is there. Medicine will not probably take out, let's, let's use, for instance, someone who has lost a job. You know, these days we have a lot of banks going down and people are being laid off. Yeah. If that is causing the depression, and you're giving medicine to elevate your mood, to feel good f for some time, it hasn't changed the fact that you've lost your job, you know. But the psychiatrist uses the medication so that going deep down into that state, that can easily lead to death. You'll be arrested from that state. Okay. Then quickly a psychologist may have to come in, okay. you know. So the psychologist, he is looking at the situation on the ground, the okay. cause of it. Then helping you deal with it. Okay. So you don't just feel happy temporarily, but... Okay how moving forward how do you deal with it so that's that's the difference with the two but we work hand in hand one cannot ha work without the other okay. yeah <laughs> okay so reginald i'd like you to um, kind of clarify how community-based rehabilitation kind of works for mental health community-based rehabilitation. rehabilitation since your community Okay, so um, for community development, okay. um, community development is a long-term plan, okay. okay, which is aimed at uh, bridging the imbalances okay. in the society okay. through collective learning, um, through um, collective um, work. So it's like the whole community comes together mm. okay, to come up with a particular aim to achieve a certain goal. So that is basically what community development is. Okay. So we work with the community people. Okay. We go to their grassroots, assess their needs, help them come up with a plan, <coughs> and then also assist them, you know, how to, to uh, uh, let's say, put together resources, okay. and then uh, uh, work on the need that we identified that is community development. So when it comes to community-based rehabilitation, then you are trying to say that um, the community must get involved. Yes. So the people that are sent to the rehabs mm -hmm. must belong to the community. Okay. That is what community-based is anything that involves the local people because we all come together as a group we come <coughs> together to learn we come together to achieve a certain goal and that is the work of a community development officer because we need to go to the grassroots mm. help these people to come together so we live amongst the people, the people. we identify their needs and then uh, put together policies and plans and also gather resources because the people cannot do those things themselves. So we assist them to gather those resources, bring on board agencies mm -hmm. that can help them achieve that particular goal, and then we roll it on. Oh, okay. yeah. So for community development or community-based, mm -hmm. we come together as a community. Mm -hmm. No one is left out. So if it is a, a toilet facility that we want to put up, the whole community comes on board. You see women fetching water, men carrying blocks. <laughs> and so everybody comes on board. Mm -hmm. That is community-based. So when it comes to mental health, mm -hmm. then it means that these uh, patients would have to live amongst us. Yeah. So what do we do? We come up with strategies. We come up with policies. We gather the people, talk to them, sensitize them always keep them on their toes how to live with it because we would all want to live in a society where mm -hmm. there's some form of resilience or yeah. you know so what do we do because living in a society where you think this person has a mental issue like stigmatization and everything so yes. how then so it is the work of a community development officer to identify those issues and try to address them collectively so we don't deal with the individuals, but we deal with the community as a group. Mm. So we organize them. We have a, 
focus group discussion amongst maybe, let's say, we organize the opinion leaders, mm. talk to them. We organize the youth, mm -hmm. we organize the women, we organize the men. So mm. we do all these mobilizations and, you know, from time to time, have sensitizations on, you know, issues that are bothering them in the so, so and some of them to come up with issues that are bothering them then they would want you to talk to them about it so if they have realized that there is uh, an issue of uh, let's say mental health mm -hmm. and the stigma and then all that they come up with those issues okay. and we would have to assist them okay. so we bridge <coughs> we, we are the bridge between the community and then the authorities so if it is mental health, mm -hmm. then quickly I need to see a psychiatrist or a yeah. psychologist. Yeah. Now I send the psychologist to the community people mm -hmm. and then make sure that that issue is solved. Okay. So how frequent do you guys collaborate? Because since maybe a community like Tema, mm -hmm. they'll come up with, they'll come and tell you guys, community developers, that okay, we've realized that there are mental health issues here, so we need your help. Do you always collaborate with hospitals and stuff like that to cheat? Yeah, to we talk do. About such. Now there is a policy, let's say the structure, it's, okay. it's being piloted though. Oh, okay. That, um, you know, we have youth friendly facilities, like youth friendly, we call it the youth friendly corners okay. at our various hospitals. Oh. And we have the community youth friendly corner. Okay. So what, what we what do is, these adolescents, they go there with their issues. And we have a lot of players on board. We have the DOFSU, the Social Welfare and Community Development, the Community Health Nurses. We have the doctors. Oh, really? We also have the psychiatrists, the psychologists. Oh, okay. So we all come together as a unit mm -hmm. to assist these young ones. Oh, okay. Because there, there are a lot of them going through you know, issues and, and, and I see mental health as a social issue more than the health, health. aspect because, okay. you know, you live in a society where you would want to, you know, get everything normal, yeah. whereby everything normal is there should not be so many imbalances. It should be stable. So let's say I move from primary school, mm -hmm. I go to JHS, mm -hmm. and then move to secondary school. It should be smooth. smooth. <laughs> okay. So the moment there is a shortfall, mm. it adds stress. Yeah. Okay. And we, we, we really don't pay attention to so those well. things. But we think mental health is, you know, the person needs to go to the hospital, take drugs, and then... There are root causes, mm -hmm. and these root causes are the social issues that we need to identify. That's how come we've all come together as a group mm -hmm. to assist the young ones, you know, go through the transition from um, adolescent to adult. Mm -hmm. So normally we, we, we consider from the ages 10 to 24. You know, the adolescent are between the ages of 10 and the 19. Mm. Okay, but we add the, the, from 19 to 24 because the transition from adolescent to adulthood is also a different thing that comes with a whole lot of issues. Mm. Yeah. So we would have to assist these young ones <coughs> to manage the behavioral changes, the development stages, the hormonal imbalances yeah. and then all that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, all these things, when it comes to mental health, all these, because whatever change that goes on in your body mm. affects your brain. Yeah. It affects your thought process. And sometimes when it happens that way, people tend to find an alternative. Mm. So, you find a pregnant girl. Mm -hmm smoking because when she smokes she feels relieved she mm -hmm. doesn't think about the pregnancy yeah how do we deal with it we all have to come together as a group if it is welfare if it is community development 
we all come together. If it's psychiatric treatment, whether the psychologist needs to um, also get involved, mm -hmm. we all come together as a group. Oh, okay. So it is the work of the community development officer to liaise with all these authorities to help assist the community people because they can't voice out to any of these authorities. They would have to go through us. Yeah. Okay. That is why we live amongst them and then mm. assist them go about their normal activities. Okay. Mm. okay. Uh, Mr. Jumoni, I would like you to uh, kind of explain what goes into rehabilitation. Rehab? Yes. Hmm. It's, a <laughs> it's a whole package, it's a whole, whole concept. Um, first of all, the person is not well yeah. or has not been well mm -hmm. and um, needs treatment. After the treatment is done, the person has to go back home. Mm -hmm. But of course, rehabilitation starts right from the point of, of treatment. Mm -hmm. But in mental health, because a lot of us think that once the person has been mentally ill, they can never be good again. Yeah, so you hear issues like once mad, always mad, that yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, but well, what condition is there that cannot be okay? We get malaria this week, next week we get malaria again, but that we don't complain. Mm. But if the person has a disease of the, of the head, the, the brain, or the mind, and it happens again, then we say it has never been gone. Yes, we do admit that it's, it's difficult dealing with mental health issues. But it doesn't mean that a person can never be normal again. You see? So, going through that stage or that these processes requires a lot of issues. So, the person recovers to a point. We need to make sure that the person gets integrated back into society and should not assume their normal level of functioning. Because one of the criteria we usually use to define normality or abnormality is a level of functioning. So if it is impaired, then we think you are mentally not well. So we cannot be moving around fine, but once you could not perform optimally, then you are mentally not well. So when you are being treated, we want you to get to a stage where you can function properly. Mm -hmm. So rehabilitation deals with these parts because the person may lose job the person may not have insights to train the person may not be able to do something for some some period so now that they are getting back to normalcy what do we do for them so even in our psychiatric hospitals what we do is we have all sorts of workshops that these people are taking through so that by the time they go out they have acquired some skills that they can use mm -hmm. there's carpentry there's um Tailoring the, there are so many things, mm -hmm. and there are also games that a person can can help the person revive. Mm -hmm. You know, now they go back into the community. The reintegration process starts. Mm -hmm. You know, so rehabilitation generally is anything we do to get a person back to a state where they can function in, in society. Okay. That's basically okay. about it. Okay. It is not just the health facility or the health worker. That is required to do that. Mm -hmm. The family is an important agency in this. And then the community developers. So if community, the communities are not designed to incorporate these people, they will come back, but they will be sick again. <laughs> yes, exactly. If you come back home and you want to do something, you have your little coins, and then everybody tells you that you have been mad. I'm using this word loosely. <laughs> Because in psychology, we don't have anything like that. No, okay. Madness is actually, for me, if somebody says that I'm mad, the person means I'm, I'm angry, oh. right? <laughs> so if you call somebody mad from today, you should stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but if community sees these people as, as not worthy of living among them, not accepting them, they cannot work, nobody want to wants to employ them, they are even sacked from their homes, then how do they survive? That pressure alone will get the person back into the hospital. So rehabilitation is a, is a whole package we need to, to practice properly. Mm -hmm. you know. 
That is why community-based rehabilitation becomes important. And for us in mental health um, um, field, we always want to bring the society in general on board, starting with the family. Mm. Because most of the times we have our patients being ab abandoned. They bring them, yes, they are now in the psychiatric hospital. Mm. The doctor is there, the nurse is there, then they are gone. For the rest of their life, the person is not accept uh, accept accepted. So they are just there. Mm. Even if they are fine, where do you take them? Because nobody is looking for them again. Hey. So rehabilitation is, is something we need. So we, we try to bring the family on board. Let them accept the fact that the person can be fine again. Oh. And who have to go back home. <laughs> so that is not all. So he talked about the social workers. Mm -hmm. They play a very key role in this. Mm. They try identifying the homes of these people. Preparing their family to accept them. Then if there are, there are any jobs they can do, they are already trained with certain things. How do we set them up and all these things? So it becomes very, very critical in, in, in treating mental health. Okay. It doesn't just end in the hospital. Mm. So when the person goes back, what should they do? How are they managed? Mm. Even the family is taught how they should dispense their drugs to them. Because these people, you know, interestingly, the drugs we use in mental health treatment have more or less some severe or serious side effects okay. or obvious side, let me put it, obvious side effects. So it's discomforting. Patients may not want to continue it. Okay. Sometimes you may put on weight. Sometimes um, some, I mean, obvious signs that people can see. They, they don't, they will not want. So when they get home, they don't want to take the medication. Okay. But in a hospital, we have ways of, of luring them into it. Yeah. So the family is taught how to do all these things before they get there. Okay. Yes, for let's say the person has been left in the hospital for two, three, four years. Their rooms or their room in the house has been taken. <laughs> now they have been dispatched back home. How do we do? We have to prepare the home for them. There should be a room for them too. They shouldn't come and feel like I am no longer in this, or I'm not part of this family anymore because I don't have a room. They now have to be sleeping on the couch. No, that's distressing. Yeah. Before I got to the hospital, I had my bed, mm -hmm. but now I have to use a couch. How? So rehabilitation is, is, is a bigger picture we need to look at. And at the community level, we need to sensitize people about how they should deal with these people. And then also desensitize people about how they see mental health. So that if the person comes out from the psychiatric hospital and is passing through the community, you don't point at them that this is a bottom person. No, that, it's not worth it. You know the interesting thing? Myself and you mm -hmm. can end up there any time. And when you point finger at those people, and then we end up being one of them, and they do it to us, you see how painful it can be. Very, very painful. Now the person is well, can understand whatever you are saying. Then you tell the person that that is a mad person going. How will you feel? Very painful. So communities have to be dressed up ready to accept these people so that we don't call them names. Mm -hmm. So rehabilitation is when we are able to prepare the grounds for these people to come in. Mm -hmm. Then preparing the person to also be able to fit into it. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So it's a whole cultural thing we, we try to play around with to help um, our patients live successfully in society. Okay, Reginald, do you have anything to add to it? Since it's community. So um, as he said, mm -hmm. For the community developers, mm -hmm. what do we do? Mm -hmm. We do group sensitization. Mm -hmm. We do group empowerment. Mm -hmm. So if it is the women that we need to target in the community, we try and mobilize the women and then empower them. Because at the end of the day, when we go to our family settings, mm -hmm. it is the woman that does everything. Yeah. Even if it's the drugs, the mother, or the sister would have to administer the drug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you see, most of our programs are somehow inclined towards the woman. Because when you go to the family, they form the basis of the community. When you really want to uh, get community members, mm -hmm. you would have to identify the women in the community. Mm -hmm. Because most of them don't move out of the community. 
A man would want to move out and then work somewhere and then later come back. But the woman would have to stay home, take care of the kids, and also manage situations at home. So the woman is then forced to work in the community that she lives in. That's why you see most of our women in petty trading, and then not that they can't move and then work somewhere else, but it's because they form the basis of the family. So most of our activities are somehow inclined towards the women and then the youth. So uh, we have uh, training programs for them. We have what we call the income generating activities where we teach them to acquire basic skills. And uh, I think I have an example. I, I had the opportunity to enter into a home mm -hmm. where um, one of the men in that house, uh, excuse me to say, mm -hmm. was okay. you know, out of order. Yeah. But I realized that the mother wasn't doing anything. The mother was home. <coughs> she would have to cook for the child, bathe for him. Hmm? Yes. And make sure he doesn't leave home, because when he steps out, they are afraid, you know, something else might hmm. happen. So the woman does all these things for the child. So we had a training program where we invited the woman. We, we were teaching them how to make this uh, liquid soap and mm. all that. That woman acquired the skill. Mm. We had to do a follow-up. We did the follow-up. We made sure, you know, the skill, the skill that she acquired then, she was putting it into practice. And gradually, she was able to get the son involved. Yeah. Because the boy is at home with her. Oh, take this is for he me. Is a teenager? Oh. No, I, I think he was around 23, 24 years. Oh. <laughs> get this for me. Get that <coughs> for me. Oh, help me stay. Okay. He can do that. So gradually, he also developed the interest in making okay. soup. Well, since he's out of order, is the liquid, like the fact that he's engaged in something with his mom, is that what is bringing his mind back? You see, sometimes they need activities. That is why he said at the rehabs, they have carpentry, they have, uh, uh, what's the name, dressmaking, they even have games oh, okay. that helps them, you know, come back to normal. Oh, normal. Okay. Okay. So, look, since uh, there are all these games and activities and then they go through all those therapies, mm. can't like, a patient be faking it that, okay, I'm getting better, <laughs> just to be able to be discharged? Well, when people come to the hospital or to the health facility, usually mental health units, mm. there are baseline assessments we do mm. that establishes what they are s struggling with or they are suffering from and the severity or the level of severity. So we don't treat globally. Mm. It is individually based. So one person could present with depression. I'm using depression because I mentioned that earlier. Another person presents with the same thing but we look at the levels. We look at the, the, the cause, the, the reason for the, this person to be depressed. So all these things determine what therapy, what treatment we give them, or even in terms of medication, the dosage and all those things. As we go along, yeah. we reassess to determine how the person is recovering, how the person is doing. Okay. Yes, you can fake. But we can't get you. Really? <laughs> oh, sure. You see, uh, if you are not well, you are not well. 
some things are difficult for you to just uh, trick people on. I know this would be a joke. There are, there are, there are jokes around that. They say uh, in a psychiatric hospital, they wanted to find out those who are well, so they discharge them. Those who are not well, they, sh they, sh they keep them. So they ask them individually. If I give you uh, a knife and uh, an orange, what will you do? The one says, I'll peel it nicely and then eat. Mm. Then they said, oh, this person is fine. Mm -hmm. Then they asked the other one, if I give you a, a, a pool of water, what will you do? Then he says, I'll peel it nicely and then I'll eat. Mm? Uh, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> it tells you. you know, th those are just jokes. But there are, there are things we want to see. We don't just, it's not just a one-way assessment. We are observing you, right? Your own colleagues around what they say about you, your activity level. You know, some, mm. the, some insights should be gained. We ask you simple questions and how you respond to them. So your thinking pattern, your behavior, while you are still on admission or not, or anytime you come and all that. So faking it, you can do it to some extent. Mm. But you also are looking for certain things. If you don't meet th that criteria or those criteria, we will let you go, you know. But even that, we are trying hard now. That is the essence of the community-based mental health project or program. We are trying so much that we don't keep people in, in, in facilities. Oh, okay. Because one, keeping people there increases the stigma. Two, it, wastes, or it takes a lot of resource. Mm. So we, as much as possible, we're trying to get the people back into the community and we see them on, um, on OPD basis. So to even come about faking <laughs> will not be necessary. You see, and some people they really take these uh, programs and facilities seriously. Maybe originally the person has no treat or no um, skills in any of these businesses or activities, and they have come to find it there. So they take the opportunity, they learn so hard, they go home and they have something already. It is just like what we do for um, juveniles in Boston homes. They come out with some skills. They can make shoes, they can make bags, they can do anything. So these patients, do, this is what we intend to do for them, you know. So if somebody fakes it, but you know, if your head is aching you and you decide to fake that your head is not aching, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there, there's, there, are there are procedures we go through. Any tests, like medical tests? Um, yes, for mental health, we have... Um, okay, let me, let me just give you this quick one. We have what we call mental status examination, mm -hmm. right? If you come into the consulting room, mm -hmm. how even you sit tells me something. Mm -hmm. Yes, how you dress tells me something. Your hair up to your toe. As if I ask you a question, how you speak tells me so much. For instance, uh, for instance, I ask you, how are you? Then you tell me, oh, this is lovely today <laughs> when I was coming. By the way, you are beautiful. Then I start saying all sorts of things. Of course, I, I, I should conclude that, yes, all is not well. Or I can ask you a simple question. What is today's date? Or what is today's day? Or what time is it? Just guess. Or where are you now? You know, if you have, all right, you should tell me that you are at AAU, right? Mm -hmm. But if you tell me, yes, I'm on the clouds flying above, you know, or I am in the market trying to sell something, once it doesn't go in the right way, yeah, I, I will begin to think that something is wrong. So if you are faking, some little, little things can, you know. But we psychologists, apart from the these mental status examinations we do we also use some standardized tests some questions are put there sometimes some pictures are shown you make descriptions of them whatever you tell me tells me an idea or, or gives me an idea sorry of what is going on in there so it you didn't know which one they use so you better 
cooperate and do the right <laughs> thing before your time is elongated. <laughs> Rehabilitation methods or strategies mm. on a mental patient. You talked about the fact that there are games and other things they go through. You talked about the fact that um, you have a one on one session with them. What mm. about counseling? Yes. Um, counseling, let's distinguish counseling from psychotherapy. Okay. Um, in, in its. its um, well, let me try to explain a little. Counseling originally is a process of helping you make decisions. Mm -hmm. So typically a counselor will not make decisions for you. He's, he or she is helping you make decisions. And it's for people who are at a crossroad, mm -hmm. difficulty planning something. So they come in very well on that. But clinical psychologists are looking at people with mental health problems, mm -hmm. challenges. So they are helping treat the condition. You get it? Mm -hmm. So counseling, yes, it's, it's ideal. It's, it's, it comes in mental health. Because if you can't make choices, you can't make decisions, you, you are confused. It can have a whole lot of challenges for you. When it aggravates, then counseling becomes a uh, little unnecessary. It has to go to another level. Oh, okay. You get it. So, uh, counseling comes in when maybe families have to be invited. They should be helped to know what they, they can do. You know, so simple counseling techniques can be used. But with the patient, mm -hmm. and sometimes the whole family may even be, they will be torn apart. They don't see what they should do. Then it ra raises conflicts among them and all those things. It's not just counseling that does that, you know. So the therapy goes to all those, those parts. But uh, interestingly, a clinical psychologist can do counseling and do it as well as a counseling psychologist can do. So yes, we blend, it, blend them all. And psychiatrists even do the counseling. We are not saying counseling is not, is not important. It is highly important. We give them that, that role, you know. But psychotherapy is when we holistically tackle the issue at hand. And I think you're asking about some of the um, rehabilitation strategies we use. So apart from the one-on-one, -on -one where we identify, we assess, diagnose, and try to treat a condition, mm -hmm. we also do the um, skills training, you know. Generally, in our health facilities, we have those things where the person is helped with certain skills. That is for people who are who are um, inpatient, they've been admitted. So as they are gaining insight, we try to take them through these skills. When they are going back home, that is another model on its own. So social workers come in strong, where they have to do visits, right? Mm -hmm. Try to make sure medications are being taken. And maybe, let me give you this example of a drug addict, addict maybe an alcoholic. The person is getting back into the community. A whole lot of things have to change. Some people be get back to the bottle because, simply because there are drinking sports around. It is not, it is not um, out of place for the social worker or even the psychologist or even the psychiatrist to visit the home of this patient and go to the bars around and tell them that, well, for so-and-so -so -so reason, this person does not to him. Yeah. It can be done. But interestingly, our society is not sensitized enough. This person comes and then they sell to them because they want the money. Mm -hmm. They will even go ahead, but they've not, the person is not working. They will come and credit and buy and buy and buy, and then the family will be arrested for it. So all these things are put in place. So rehabilitation is not just the skills they will acquire, but how the community, society will get this person as, as a family, as a friend, and help them through. So basically, uh, ultimately, we want the person to reach a stage where the condition they are suffering from mm -hmm. will no longer be there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. once this person is discharged and is going back into the community, mm -hmm. do you think um, like the community developers should be told that, okay, this person is about to be discharged, mm -hmm. so can you keep an eye on the person or what can all the community developers also do? Mm -hmm. 
Um, well, I think yes, he, he'll come in, but I just I want to add that, in fact, if you want to holistically look at mental health in our communities, nobody should be left out. And the community developers play a vital role because they are on the ground mobilizing people. So maybe I am in a hospital. I don't even know my left from right in the community. If, if you give me Tema, I always get lost. You reach here, they say community one. You get here, they say community nine. How can one and nine be, <laughs> you know? But he knows that. He knows who to call on. He is in touch with the, the, uh, the assembly member, the, all those, those people. So the first point of call for me will be these people. Mm. So that they put the necessary things on the ground. And interestingly, social workers work so much with them. That is why in the hospitals, we have the social workers in there. So once we are discharging, it's a whole team that comes together. I put a plan up that this person is going home. This is the home. These are the, the we do a needs assessment. What do they need if they go home? What is the financial stance of the family? How would they cope and all those. And then social worker goes with the person. That's the follow up. And these people are they they already have them on board. So who, whichever social worker is coming they know what their person is coming to do. So it is always ideal that we use, we get the, co the community involved in this process. Well, I know we, we've been talking about some challenges, but yes. I just want to chip in this that there's a whole lot of challenge. Or there are so much, so many challenges uh, uh, attached to this. Mm. Sometimes you go to a family. Are you related to such and such person? No, 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 no. I am not. Mm -hmm. They will not own up. At a point, you have to carry this patient in a car, roaming from home to home, and you end up not having anyone. So it becomes so difficult. You have to get a patient back again. Sometimes the patient remains there and deteriorates even further. So pff, we get to challenges. We talk about that. <laughs> okay, right. I, 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 what do you have to add to it? Um. I want to correct something. We are all social workers. Oh, okay. The Sorry about that. <laughs> the, the social welfare. So when you when you go to the MMDA level, mm. okay. it's a department. Okay. So it is the Department of Social Welfare and Community Development. Okay. okay. But then we are found in the community. Mm -hmm. So like we identify the problem. We identify the social issue and then bring them, and then we solve the issue holistically. So when it comes to that, we, that's why the fact that we are community development officers, we are all mm -hmm. social workers. Okay. That really makes the work yes. uh, uh, um, interesting. Interesting, yes. yes. And I know the, the uh, um, community psychiatric nurses, yes, yeah. And then we work with them. We work with the community. You know, they are yeah. community nurses. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So they are always in the community. Mm -hmm. So we work with those people mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So sometimes with their home visits and then all that, we accompany them. We assess the environment. Sometimes you enter the home and then you realize that this is not right. It is the duty of the community development officer to point it out to the family. Mm -hmm. This and this and this that you are doing is not right. It is not going to help the patient in any way. Uh. And you do follow ups to ensure. Yeah, we do follow ups to ensure that. Okay. On our itinerary, we have what we call home visits. Mm -hmm. And it's mandatory. You need to go on home visits. Especially when you, you've taught someone a skill. You need to follow up on that person. Okay. When you will help the person uh, reach some sort of financial, you need to follow up on that person. You help the person acquire loans, you need to follow up on that person and then see how best the person is doing. Mm. We do all that. So we are <coughs> always among the community members. We do community entry, whereby community entry is 
you see the opinion leaders. You know, before you enter a community, they are opinion leaders. The chief, the assemblymen, the unit committee. And the assembly cannot enter into a community without going through the opinion leaders. So we have contacts with these opinion leaders. So what happens is the assembly will now fall on us you know, to enter the community through these opinion leaders. Because you can't just go into a community and gather people. No. You'll be, you be, you be, you be sacked. Yes. <laughs> you can't just enter into a community and then gather people. So that's why we do things the right way. We have <coughs> links with these opinion leaders, the assemblymen, the unit committees, the chiefs. Yes. So whatever program we are coming up with, we go through all these people. That is why we rather bring the authorities to the grassroots. It is our duty to get the authorities. To the, it is our duty to work with these people so that they will feel that they have the government as an integral part of their <coughs> life. But as we said, there are a lot of challenges. Yeah. Which we are coming to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he mentioned an aspect that is in, is, is uh, necessary mm -hmm. to <coughs> um, mm -hmm. develop even further. Mm -hmm. The community mental health nurses, mm -hmm. their follow-up programs are very very key, mm -hmm. which we are we are using these days so much. <coughs> you see, some patients don't even have to come to the hospital. One, they may not have the money. Or there may be nobody there to bring them. Or even if they come all the way, it's, it's stress. Mm -hmm. So these nurses go there, dispense a the drug there and then, and come back. Sometimes they even go there, uh, pitch a little camp, and then people come there, assess there, diagnose there, start treatment for them. Mm -hmm. Then they go and come back. Yes. They are trained such that they can do those things. Sometimes... Um, uh, psychiatrists can go with them, but the problem is we don't have so much of the psychiatrists. So the community, sorry, the psychiatric nurses trained for these community programs, they go there and treat people right in their homes and come back. Now the good part is that nobody will see you as having gone to a psychiatric hospital. Yeah. So the stigma goes down. And even if you have been there before, so long as they come to you at home deal with you and go back, people will see that, oh, you've not been going to psychiatric hospital anymore. So it becomes a very, uh, um, it cushions the process. Yeah. So people will take their mind off you a little, off. you know. <laughs> so that, that, that has been uh, a very helpful aspect of the, 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 the process or the program. Mm. Mm. So if we should set up a community mental health rehabilitation center in somewhere like Tema. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about we are talking about um, stigmatization. Mm -hmm. Don't you think someone walking in don't you think someone walking in and working out every day mm -hmm. it's stigma. And then we talked about the fact that the nurses also help reduce the stigma but mm -hmm. what else can be done to reduce the stigma that comes with having a center in okay. somewhere like Tema. Okay, so uh, if we put up a center <coughs> and call it a name like so and so rehabilitation, once <laughs> we are smart, <laughs> once we put a name on it, people begin to define it as such. Yeah. Mm. So I think the, the, one of the nice things they are doing is giving it very favorable names, favorable names. Uh, youth friendly. friendly corner. Really? Yes. Even oh. even HIV. Now, if you go to hospitals, you won't you see any see place anything. called HIV unit. What is it called? They have their own they names. Callable, for instance, you have it called Fever's Unit. <laughs> what has Fever got to do with that, you know? <laughs> Some will call it ST STI Unit. Oh. So, no, don't go to a hospital looking for HIV unit. <laughs> you don't have that. So, the same way, if we try to give it names that would change perception it is good uh, 
But as to whether people will stigmatize if you walk in and you walk out, I think the same thing we encounter in the hospitals, psychiatric hospitals, mm -hmm. that could be encountered there. So long as it is designated for mental health, yeah. people can still have that. That is why now we are advocating seriously that mental health is incorporated into primary health care. Mm. And the primary health care is health care provided at a community level. Yeah. Every small unit meant for health in general mm. should have a mental health comp component because health can never be complete without mental health. Yeah. So if you have any structures around, let's incorporate it. Put the, the service provided a, a provider in there and they can do everything from there. Now, at a community level, whatever programs we have with a particular designation, we can put that in there too. So, for instance, if you are going to the assembly to see um, a social worker or a community, yeah, any of them, yeah. and then they have the social worker there, they have the nurse there, they have whatever you've gone there to do and come back, nobody knows. So I personally will not advocate that we design a structure somewhere just meant for mental health. What we are avoiding will still continue. Yeah. But I, and I think many people will also advocate that, any designated place for any project, any program in community, you have that as part of it. So that the person doesn't have to wander around. Mm. Should I go? Should I not go? There should be a one-stop shop Somewhere, you come there, you are looking for uh, um, a social worker, you get, you are looking for doctors, you get, you are looking for a psychologist, you get, psychiatrist is there. You know, if they handle it and they realize that you need further mm -hmm. assistance, then they refer you. So at a community level, these things can be done. And I think um, they have a, a model. I think that is good. Communities should emulate that. Mm -hmm. Schools can even have this. Now, secondary schools have, um, they, they have the sick bay. Yeah. And you only put physical health, nurse, and whatever there. Think, not thinking about the children's mental health. Mm. So, if you can have a nurse who will be taking care of their wounds, their headache. What, look at secondary school. Oh. These, children, these people mm. are the most confused stage in life. Going through this pressure. Then you're only thinking about their head, their stomach and not thinking about their mind. When they fall, they go haywire, <laughs> let me put it that way, mentally challenged, then they rush them to the psychiatric hospital. Even the, the hospitals in their communities do not have mental health units. So they go all the way to psychiatric hospital. Everybody knows that eh, there's a problem. When they come, then they are being stigmatized. So if you are talking about community, we are not just talking about assemblies, we're talking about even schools. The schools are there, uh, wherever, you know, this, this is assemblies, uh, circuit, do you have anything like that? Well, but whatever can, 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 can serve the community, we should make some provision, even if the person will not be stationed there 24-7. Yeah. There should be contacts. You can call the person, they can rush in there, deal with the situation in the community, and come back. Just like we are doing for community nursing, not even a mental health, community nurses, go around and vaccinate people in the communities. Mental health, in quotes, mental health vaccination should be done in the communities as well. Oh, okay. And we will, we, will come, we, will, we will come off this challenge of the person has been mad before, so nobody wants to get close to them. Mm. Mm. Regina, what then is the way forward since we are wrapping up as a community developer? Um, since we are wrapping up, mm -hmm. you know, the program that we started in Tema, okay. it's really yielding results. Oh, okay. So, you know, for our youth-friendly corners, we have them in the facilities. Oh, okay. okay, but um, it's a section of the facility, so you enter the hospital, you don't, you know, go through the normal OPD and then you sit in a long queue, wait to enter the consulting room mm -hmm. and then from there, good. You know, when you have those malaria and then all that, mm -hmm. but those with peculiar issues, issues. Okay. 
you enter the youth friendly facility whatever problem you have it's being addressed there so we have Dofsu on board mm -hmm. we have social welfare and community development on board right. we have the nurses the community health nurses everybody on board even the doctors on board we have the ENT the psychiatric unit okay. counselors everybody on board so when you enter, we assess the condition. And we don't just assess the health condition, but you know, we, we have a chat. Because some of these young people, um, in their homes, they don't have anybody to talk to. So they find refuge in our facilities. Okay. Yes. And for the community, youth friendly corners that you know we are coming up with we have these youth groups you know we organize them maybe once in a month and then have meetings sensitizations you pick up to there's the president of the group there's that we have mentorship programs mm. for some of these youth and it's helping and i think if the government um, invests so much into this I think some of these social vices yeah. might in a way be reduced. Mm. Yeah. Some of these social vices. Because we have all the players on board. Mm -hmm. So when it, when you enter the community and you identify a problem that is uh, some form of abuse, domestic violence and then all that, you have the Dofsu person there. You don't need to go through the long process of Picking mm. police, uh, form. police form, you know, this, that. I will have to give you a referral note. You move all the way to Dobson. No. Then, then, <coughs> I call. Oh, boss, this and this and this and this is what's happening. Okay, so should I direct the person to your facility or you come to our facility? Mm. Then, then, then. Right. And we, uh, the results are, Tremendous. We have, you know, good results coming out. And the turnout for this year is increasing. Mm. You have the young people walk in themselves. Wow. Yeah. You have the young people walk in themselves. Not pregnant, adolescent, but then they walk in sometimes for... And we also create this opportunity for them. We have the career guidance, okay. you know, and counseling because we have NGOs that we work with. We work with the National Youth Authority, mm -hmm. and then they provide these career guidance and then all that the platform. So they just walk in. You can have anybody you want to nice. talk to. So when you meet the nurse, and the nurse realizes that, oh, what you are talking about is more of a social issue, the social worker comes in, mm -hmm. and we see how best. Yes. But I think the government should, you know, adopt this, this strategy and then invest. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we need to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. How are we giving back to the community? If we don't address some of these issues, mm -hmm. how do you think we can give back to the community? Mm -hmm. If you are not building hospitals, you are not building schools, you are not giving them money in their pockets, at least help address these social issues. Hmm. <laughs> because I, I, I have always had this uh, mindset that, you know, the more you go into social intervention, mm. the more your economy will be boosted. Mm. Because I need health care. Provide me with primary health service. We will pay for it. Yeah. Once the facility is there, yeah. we will pay for it. Some countries have been doing that, and it's working for them. They pay, me, they pay so much attention to social intervention, and it's working for them. School, we also have education on board, mm. whereby we also make sure that these patients go back to school. Mm, okay. So you don't go through the long process of no, 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 no. 
once you are in school and something happens and you come out of school we give you the opportunity mm -hmm. to go back to school go back. Okay. yeah Mm. So, <laughs> I think this is something yeah. that the government, yeah. it's, it's been done at the grassroots. Yeah. So, I'm sure when the, all these players okay. pick it up at the top and then design a policy, mm -hmm. you know, I think it would help right. our community people. Mm. Dr. Spedge, you want final words? Oh, okay. We are finishing now. Eh? Yeah. Huh. Okay. I thought we were going to get time to talk about challenges. Yes, <laughs> you'll be invited again. Ah, okay. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Final words. Uh, mental health mm -hmm. is key and it should be primary to everyone. Health without mental health is incomplete. But we have for a long time rejected this truth mm. and those who seek to improve on their mental health have been stigmatized discriminated against ghana yes we are making some progress though but we still have a lot to do and i will encourage all of us on individual basis to be a part of this agenda we should all be players in this what can we do in a little way? And then to add to it, if we have any personal challenges regarding mental issues, mm. let us not hesitate. Because people wait, thinking they are strong, thinking they want to avoid the stigma till it is pulled out of their control. Mm -hmm. When mental health is left to a severe stage, it's difficult to treat. Mm. But if you start it early, you can arrest the situation. It's just like you see signs of stroke coming. And then, uh, like, as for me, it's a long time I've been to the hospital. Me, they, since they born me, I've not been to hospital. Oh, those things. And when it strikes you down, it, will, it may take your life. It may take forever to treat. But if you see the signs and then you do everything towards it, you can be, you can be helped. Mm -hmm. The same way, if we think we are so strong, you lose a relative and you don't want to cry you don't want to seek help or you've lost your job you don't want to get an intervention or you have a broken heart and you don't want somebody to help you and then you be in your corner crying alone it can it can get really deadly yeah. so let's all come on board let's seek help when we need it it is not a crime to be mentally ill just as it is not a crime to have malaria Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Thank then you. also to add to okay. what he is saying, mm -hmm. the numbers we have realized this year mm -hmm. on mental health, mm -hmm. that is from those visiting wow. our youth-friendly corners, are shooting up. Really? Yeah. They mm -hmm. enter with mm -hmm. mental health issues, yeah. Mm -hmm. Suicidal tendencies, and then all that. that is why I believe if we give them the opportunity, you know, to have such a facility that they can walk in at any time, it will also help. Because mental health is very, 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 very yeah. important. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been very wonderful having you on the show today. Mm -hmm. Okay, viewers, this has been Mental Health. This has been Health Africa on AAU TV. If you followed us, you, we talked about community-based mental health, rehabilitation services, and counseling in Africa. And Dr. Mr. Jiwonu has told us that health without mental health is incomplete. And just as you pay attention to your malaria, you should also pay attention to your brain. Thank you very much. I've been your regular host, Bridget Denton.